Good morning. My talk today is on food loss and waste. My interest in this topic is not only connected to my professional background, but also my personal life experience. I grew up in a small village in northwest China. There was a food shortage and chronic hunger throughout my childhood. So food and food waste are important issues to me. When we put together this task force, actually our task force members are all passionate about food waste and food waste reduction. But we recognized that we needed to put our emotion and passion on the side and focus on what are the data we have. So we took the approach to make this paper objective, balanced, and data-driven. That was how this uh, paper was uh, constructed and written. So the task force members um, have a very broad background. Some of us work in the universities, some are from private industries, and some are from non-profit organizations. Our cast liaison is John Vassini. A special thanks to Dr. Jean Busby of USDA ERS. Uh, her name is not on the official list, but we are grateful for her contribution to the paper. When you um, read the literature, there are a lot of definitions for different phrases people use, and uh, such as food loss, food waste, food loss and waste, and wasted food or food wastage. In this paper, we use the phrases interchangeably. The paper is 20 pages long, and uh, it covers uh, various aspects of food waste. Today's talk, I'm going to focus on three core issues, which are the magnitude of food loss and waste in the U.S., food waste reduction, recovery, and recycling the data, and interpretive analysis, and followed um, by conclusions. So the magnitude of the problem who has not heard that we waste one-third of the food produced for humans? But actually, when you look at the data in the U.S., there is no single comprehensive estimate of food loss and food waste. What we have are four major sources of data. Together, these sources of data reflect the magnitude, the size, and uh, the extent of the problem, and also indicates potential opportunities for food waste reduction and uh, for recycling the resources embedded in the food waste. So the first data source is the USDA ERS. It says 60 million tons of food loss as uh, Edible food are lost in the retail and the consumer levels, never eaten. So 60 million tons of food loss, that is 31% of the total food availability in the U.S. So total food availability is 195 million tons for the given year. The second source of data is the NRD, NRDC. It says 78 million tons of food is wasted. And this would account for 40% of the total food availability. Third piece of data is the US EPA. It's about 35 million tons of food waste. Here, it includes edible and inedible food waste. This data come from um, the municipal solid waste collection. So many tons of food is hard for us to imagine. Here, 
we calculated 35 million tons of food waste would be something like three tractor trailer loads of food waste every minute generated in this country. And then the fourth source of information is from refed. It says about 57 million tons of edible and inedible food waste generated. And what's nice about this refed data is that it breaks down to three sectors with about 9 million tons of food waste occurring on the farm, never left the farm. And then 0.9 million tons food waste occurring at the food manufacturing sector. And then 47 million tons occurring at the consumption stage, which include at homes and uh, consumer facing businesses such as restaurants, grocery stores, and institutional cafeteria, etc. 47 million tons, which is 82% of the total food waste along the supply chain for this given source. So again, the largest food waste stream occurs at the consumption stage. Another aspect of the food loss, the magnitude of the problem, uh, is uh, uh, we can look at the different food groups. This is uh, the 60 million tons of food loss at the retail and the consumer levels, and uh, grouped into different categories, dairy products and vegetables have the largest loss. Together, it's more than uh, a third of the food loss, and followed by green products and uh, fruits. And we lost a lot, a lot of uh, meat and poultry fish as well. It's together, it's uh, 7 million tons. Huge amount. Of course, wasted food means missed opportunities to feed hungry people. And wasted food also means the resources used to produce the food is lost, and also means financial drains. To give some idea of how much resources um, are embedded in the wasted food, we calculated for the retail and consumer level edible food loss, it account for 27% of the cultivated cropland in the U.S. And uh, that, in terms of acreage, it will be the total land area of Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, plus Rhode Island combined together. The, uh, the amount of irrigation water that was utilized for producing the amount of food loss we never eaten it's 25% of the total, and which converted into volume, and it would be enough water to cover the city of uh, Washington, D.C. to a depth of 350 feet. A lot of water. And the fertilizer, 26% of the total usage. And the amount of fertilizer here is one and a half times of the total fertilizer usage in the uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, wasted food also means we waste a lot of energy utilized throughout the food production and a lot of money, over 161 billion years as a retail uh, value on a yearly basis. And uh, embedded in uh, lost food, is the, the intangible impacts such as nutrient losses and water pollution, greenhouse gas emission, biodiversity loss, etc. So food waste is not an issue that's just in the U.S. It's a global issue. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals included one that is to a uh, target to reduce food loss and waste at uh, the retail and the consumer levels by 50% by year 2030. 
and this goal is also adopted by the U.S. Currently, we have a few states and a few cities in the U.S. that have enacted laws and regulations um, prohibiting food waste at the landfill. And across the country, a lot of organizations and companies and uh, citizens, uh, volunteers are working hard on various ways to reduce food waste through uh, the source reduction and food waste prevention, through food waste diversion from uh, landfill to other industrial uses or beneficial uses such as feeding animals, through food waste recycling, like a composting and anaerobic digestion, etc. So how well are we doing as a nation in terms of food waste reduction? Uh, the task force took a hard look at uh, the data we have, we could find in this country. And we did find some data, whether it's uh, from a, a charity, organizations report or uh, companies food uh, manufacturing companies survey report etc so we find some data we grouped into three um, panels here the top panel is a reflection of the data on food prevent food waste prevention and food rescue for human consumption and a few number about four data sources there added it together to about one to two million tons. That compared to 60 million tons of food loss at the retail and consumer level, this is a really small amount. The data in the, pan, in the panel in the middle there reflect, uh, reflect that uh, food waste diversion for animal feeding or non-human beneficial use. This totals 15 million tons. I must, I must say here, 15 million tons primarily through manufacturing diversion to feed animals. And this part of the food waste technically is not waste. It's byproducts generated from the man manufacturing sector. Historically, and uh, the byproducts have been well utilized through animal feeding. And then the last panel uh, at the bottom of the slides, it's about food waste recycling through composting primarily, and in some cases, anaerobic digestion. And the available data end up to about seven to eight million tons. So uh, comparing this food waste prevention and food waste reduction data we have, with what we had about the national scale food loss and waste. We could say that this is a relatively a small fraction and we have a long way to go toward the 50% reduction. So going forward, what can businesses, organizations and citizens do to decrease food waste and conserve resources? There have been um, recommendations, action plans, and uh, roadmaps presented by various organizations and groups. So the task force decided not to generate a list of recommendations. Instead, uh, we did uh, an interpretive analysis and we identified three critical areas that deserve increased attention. Consumer, changing consumer waste, uh, food wasting behavior is the key here. No one buys food to throw it away, but collectively we waste tens of million tons of food each year. The decisions we make and actions we take are not, not necessarily rational or straightforward but subject to uh, a lot of factors, external and internal. So understanding the phenomenon of food wasting behavior in light of established theories 
in social, cognitive, behavior, and uh, um, psychological sciences is important. Of particular interest is the nudge theory and its potential application in helping us find ways to nudge consumers toward making the right food decisions and adopting good practices. So action-based research is needed to help us explore new and innovative behavior changing interventions that can complement existing campaigns for broader impact. Technologies are very important and uh, it's in our daily life. And how can we explore and uh, uh, maximize the benefits of technologies in to uh, help us attain the 50% reduction goal. Uh, for food waste treatment technologies, composting and anaerobic digestion have been growing very fast and have been adopted by many businesses. The questions that need to be asked and that need to be researched include what are the efficacies of different composting uh, technologies and different uh, anaerobic digest, uh, digestion operations? And what are the economic viabilities, the relative costs and uh, benefits? And also how do we scale up? Are there limitations and trade-offs and how do we address these trade-offs. So these questions need action-based research so that we can, for the city planners and policymakers, business um, leaders, they need this kind of science-based information to make informed decision. Embedded in food waste, a large amount of proteins and carbohydrates. And uh, the existing technologies like composting and digestion, they could not recover these proteins and carbohydrates. So we need a game changer. This game changer would uh, um, rely on livestock animals and uh, then rely on technologies that can convert the large volume of food waste generated by consumers into feed for livestock animals. And uh, this feed would be safe to uh, use for animals and value added products. Actually, so these technologies are already being utilized in South Korea, where 45% of the nationals food waste is converted into animal feeding for pigs and chickens. So this, this is going to be a game changer because it brings transformative impacts. The new feed will, would allow us to replace some of the feed grains such as corn and soybeans. And uh, the spared feed grains would also allow us to save the resources that is utilized to produce those grains and also allow us to reduce the uh, environmental impacts associated with the, the production process of those feed grains. Um, altogether, the different technologies still need to be uh, systematically and comprehensively evaluated for their overall impacts on the environment, on the resources, and uh, on the whole picture of uh, the whole uh, food production systems. So let me conclude that uh, food, energy, and water security, the environmental um, um, degradation, and the climate change are unprecedented challenges facing us. And the sustainable food consumption through food waste reduction must be taken into account of the food security and the sustainability agenda. 
food waste prevention is a top priority, and changing consumer behaviors and uh, for the good food practices is essential. But behavior change takes time and perseverance, and food waste prevention alone is not a sufficient strategy. We need all workable solutions. Lastly, food waste treatment technologies have a very critical role to play, and we need research to evaluate the overall impacts of different food waste treatment technologies, on, uh, and not only on their impact of food and food waste, but also energy, water, other resources, and uh, economic viabilities, and the environmental clim and the climate outcomes. Thank you. Good.